Why is getting seen on Google so hard when you've tried everything? I remember that feeling and you just feel invisible and you've tried absolutely all the tips out there. But after digging through Google's guidelines, I hit a breakthrough and one after the other after the other. And I'm going to share those with you today. Seven breakthrough moments, seven eureka moments that suddenly made me realize what actually Google does reward when it comes to ranking. And also I've added a free download on this video that's going to help you if you ever use Google Ads. It'll give you a boost on your profile, but it's gonna save you thousands if you use Google Ads too. So make sure you download that later in the video. So breakthrough number one, I used to get reviews and when I got a review, I would reply to it and I'd put in there my area, my services, my products, every keyword I could think of, I would put in that reply, hoping that Google would use those keywords to rank me. But that's my first breakthrough. I then recognized that Google doesn't use anything that I say. It only uses what your customers say about you in the review. And you can see here, these words are in bold. You can see here, these words are highlighted. You can then search and use these as a criteria for searches. But they're all from your customers, or from your reviews, not from what you say, but from what they say. So lesson number one, Google trusts your customers more than they trust you. That moves us on to breakthrough number two. Now I used to think that Google would rank you if you did the things they asked you to do. So they would put things forward like try Google ads, or they would put forward on your profile things like say get the domain using their custom domains, or use their emails, or add their map to your website. And it's easy to think that the reason why you've not got a green circle on your profile 100% is because you haven't done the things Google's asked. Now, I thought at first that was the case, but it seems you can dismiss most of these things. Remember, Google is a business, and that's why I got a breakthrough. Google's forcing down their businesses onto your profiles, but they don't have the rights to change your ranking based on those things. So you can click the three dots, you can dismiss these, and then you can still continue to rank. And ideally you want to get that green circle 100% profile. So lesson number two, it's okay to dismiss Google's pushy suggestions. Pushy suggestions. Pushy, pushy, pushy suggestions. So breakthrough number three is all about Google Ads. Now, if you've used Google Ads, you'll know the importance of broad match, exact match. You'll know about making sure you split test them and you make sure that the winning ad appears above the others. But you'll also know that it gradually your budget continues to get larger and larger as demand and competition continues to grow. And it seems you spend more on ads and you get less client customers and quality leads. And the breakthrough came when I saw how easy you can get quality traffic from your business profile without the ads. Now, there is a way to use Google Ads to just kickstart your Google business profile so that it gets seen and can give the right signals back to Google. And if you want to know how to do that and save thousands on your ads budget and get the free traffic from your Google business profile, and I've put a link down below in the description of this video. So make sure you download that because it's really helpful and they're gonna save you a lot on the budget. And so my breakthrough there was this. Google Ads will suck your budget dry over time, but your Google business profile is free traffic and the more you optimize it, the better the quality of the traffic is. So in effect, you get loads more customers for a lot less money. So for breakthrough number four, I was saying to a client once that you need to fill out everything in your profile. Now he was a personal trainer and he said, but how do I fill out the bit about products? And it was a fair comment at first because he didn't sell gym equipment, he didn't sell protein shakes, he had no real products to sell, all he did was services. Now if you're in that situation where all you do is services, how can you find products? Well, we came across a simple solution that really worked and benefited his business. You can package up your services, your time, as products. And in this case, we did it where we gave sessions for a certain amount. We then gave a combination of say six sessions, a better amount, and even 10 or 12 sessions. And by packaging them up, do a bit of graphic design for him, we then got these working for his business straight away. And of course, products can be used by Google, particularly with AI mode coming along. These things will be in a database for Google to suggest. And so I had this breakthrough that actually anything can have a product if you think in terms of packaging time up. So lesson number four is that 
products can be just packages, services for time, or even for say gift vouchers could be a product you could use. So breakthrough number five is down to the fact that if you've ever looked around for more information about SEO, you'll find there's lots of conflicting ideas, whether you're watching it on YouTube now, or whether you're looking at blogs, or whether you're following other YouTubers too, you may come across the fact there are a difference of opinions. So my breakthrough came when I realized these three things. Number one is not all the advice out there will follow the guidelines correctly. In fact, many of them will get a big advantage known as kind of black hat or gray hat SEO, and they'll give you a big advantage very quickly, and they'll appear to be really useful tips, but actually they're breaking the guidelines. And it doesn't take long before Google either catches up with its AI, or with its robots, or it might just be someone reports it. But ultimately, for long-term ranking, then you need to avoid those quick wins. The second is to understand that the organic SEO is very different to local SEO. So if you've been following blogs and videos that talk about how to optimize your website, using keywords, using links, making sure that you use H1, H2 tags and so on, that information is very different to how local SEO works, which is about appearing in the map pack, appearing on the top of Google because you're the, one of the three businesses that Google shows on maps. So if you're a business that benefits from local people searching for you, then you need to understand local SEO and not get too caught up with the organic SEO. Now it's fair to say that the two do work together as you build authority. So it doesn't mean they're both independent of each other because they're not. Google uses both of them to build and understand the strength of your brand and it will affect both of those areas. But don't get too confused between the two, they are separate. And then the third area you need to be aware of is the fact that Google changes its algorithm constantly. So if you were to read a blog of five years ago or follow a video of five years ago on YouTube, the advice may well be wrong and could be damaging because a lot of the advice out there has changed because Google's changed, algorithms have changed. And of course, customer habits have changed. Like maybe they use their mobile now to find businesses as opposed to in the past, they probably used a desktop or a laptop. So lesson number five is ignore about 99% of the advice out there because most of it is dated, harmful, or could even get you suspended. And that brings me on to breakthrough number six. Now, when I first started out, I remember learning about NAP, name, address, phone number. And then you can add to that website and opening hours. And the idea was to make sure that what you put into your Google business profile in those areas is consistent with what the web says about your business. So if you go to Yelp, Yell, Facebook, whenever your business is mentioned, the hours, the website, the name, address, and phone number, the NAP, should all be consistent. And that's been good advice for many years, and that hasn't really changed. But what has changed is that suddenly I notice a lot of people were ranking ahead of me because they were open 24 hours. And at first it seemed they were getting a quick win because when my business was closed and they were then ranking above me, and then when my business opened, they were ranking below me, it caused the question, are opening hours actually all about just being open? Well, of course, you need to make sure that your hours represent your true opening times. So the thing it occurred to me was that maybe you should look at competition and see when are they closing? Could you open longer hours? Now, don't put 24 hours of opening if you're not open 24 hours. But on the other hand, try and stay open longer. If you can open up at eight o'clock in the morning and finish at six, and your competitors are opening at nine and finishing at five, you've got a couple of hours either side where you will outrank them. So remember, hours are useful, but also they're a ranking factor. And so that was my breakthrough on lesson number six, was keep opening hours open as long as you truthfully can, and it'll improve your ranking. So breakthrough number seven was when I realized that there's two ways to use AI. You can use AI as a friend or as a foe. Now use AI as a friend if you want to understand how your customers interact with you, you want to understand a bit more about how they're perceiving various businesses, and you can get some great ideas as to what to write about and get some ideas about how your customers perceive your type of business. But it's a foe, it's no good if you just use it purely to write articles because very quickly people will pick up on the fact that you've not really written it for humans, you've written it for robots, and robots have written it, and it loses its value quite quickly. So it's great for inspiration, but don't overuse AI. Now when ChatGPT came out, 
that's when I had my breakthrough because I realized that it could really streamline the workflow of producing content and really optimizing my business. But what I hadn't seen coming was the fact that Google now is producing an AI mode for the results. So the results are changing. Google realized that as people were using ChatGPT as a search engine, Google needed to integrate BARD a bit better than it had done. And so you'll notice over the coming months ahead, Google is now introducing AI mode. And this is an opportunity for you to get ahead of the competition. So I put together a video that shows you exactly what you need to do to get the advantage of AI mode for your business so you can appear top in the rankings and the search results that are about to be released on the updates in Google. So don't miss this video next. It's a really powerful video that's gonna help your business rank even further. I'll see you then.